Thank you for joining us. We are the Napa Valley Wine Academy. My name is Emily Lester and I'm the social media manager and the French wine correspondent at the Napa Valley Wine Academy. We offer courses online and worldwide at 10 different locations. And we are the largest provider of the WSET certification course outside of London. We are America's premier wine school. We offer a variety of web, um, webinars, podcasts, articles, and we ask that you sign up for our newsletter to stay in the know about all the exciting things that are happening at the Napa Valley Wine Academy. And we're delighted to be partnering with producers this month for a series of interviews that will coincide with the relaunch of the American Wine Expert Program. This is the only professional certification course that is dedicated to the wine producing regions of the United States. Our goal is to interview and illuminate the voices of producers in some of the lesser known states, demonstrating that there are fine wines beyond California. We want to encourage everyone to follow us on social media for educational content that will be coming to you in the month of July centered around American wines. And I'm excited because this is our first interview and I'm going to be interviewing a wine producer in Michigan. We have Soul Squeeze Sellers with Luke Pickleman. And uh, welcome. Thank you for doing this with us. Hi, well, thank you. And my <laughs> wife Faye is here with us as well. Faye Pickleman. Hello, Faye. <laughs> So, so yeah, let's to be here. Let's start with first where you are, and talk about Michigan, and we'll just kind of go into some details. So, where are you specifically? Where is your winery? So, our winery is located in Lake Leelanau, Michigan. Uh, our vineyards are in uh, both Traverse City and the Leelanau Peninsula. As you probably know, Michigan has five uh, AVAs. Uh, so our vineyards span from two of them, the Old Mission Viticulture Area and the Leelanau Peninsula. Uh, so we're in the northwest corner of the lower peninsula of the state of Michigan. Okay. Right along Lake Michigan. And you say Old Mission, can you kind of illuminate on that? Is there some, histor is there some history to the vines in Michigan? So Michigan, uh, in our region at least, we have been growing uh, wine vinifera since uh, the early 1970s. So we're going on the better part of 50 years. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, and uh, Leelanau Peninsula was first in, uh, as an AVA. Um, Southwest Michigan was before that. Right, yeah, Leelanau Peninsula came to be second AVA and then Old Mission in 87 became an AVA. Okay. So Term old mission refers to uh, some of the first settlers that uh, found the peninsula. So if you look at a map, uh, Leelanau Peninsula is the large uh, one up in the corner of the mitt. People mm -hmm. like point to their hand when they yeah. talk about where they are. And so we're up in that northwest corner and the little sliver that comes up between uh, right into the middle of, uh, of the big bay here. Uh, so it splits. Uh, the bay, uh, Lake Michigan's bay into West and East Bay. And mm -hmm. so um, Illinois is off the West Bay. Old Mission splits right up in the middle of the larger body of water. And what is the, how does that impact the climate? So what is the climate in that particular area? So our climate is really similar to um, the cooler European climates, although uh, climate change is kind of changing that. Uh, but uh, we're similar to Austria, Germany, uh, Northern France, like the Burgundy region. Okay. And the, yeah. and how does the, does the lake impact the vineyards too, or like the, the landscape in that, in that regard? Yes, very much. Uh, the reason that we, so if there's a microclimate here uh, that's created by this large body of water, the, the Lake Michigan is one of, you know, our great lakes and uh, it does regulate, it keeps uh, the temperature from the either extreme, it makes the winters generally more milder here. And so, you know, vinifera can grow here without too much uh, winter damage from the vines. Mm -hmm. um, our region's wine for, you know, they're very aromatic, they're very balanced. Uh, they provide a vivid uh, uh, portrayal of, uh, of varietal characteristics. What are the dominant grape varietals there? How many different ones? What are they? Or what are they? Uh, we, we primarily, we're really good with 
uh, dry white wines. Um, we do a lot of regions as the primary, primarily grown grape here in uh, Trevor City area. Um, but we also grow Chardonnay, we grow Pinot Blanc, mm -hmm. um, we grow, some people grow Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Pinot Gris, um, Birchtraminer, Birch Gruner okay. Beltliner. And then our reds include uh, Merlot, Pinot Noir, Cab Franc, uh, these types of uh, cold hardy reds. Mm -hmm. That sounds, I, I, I want to taste them. I'm like thinking Laura Valley Cabernet Franc over here. So I bet it's very, like, what are the, what are the character? What are the characteristics of those grape varietals and the styles of wines that you're producing? So with the, with our whites, we do a lot of dry whites, but some people do do some um, dessert wines, uh, leaving the fruit hang on the vine for a little bit longer. Um, but there's a variety of different styles that the winemakers try to produce up here. Um, but we primarily stay with with what we can do in our region. Um, the reds are a little bit, they're a little lighter bodied. You know, we don't get the really ripe growing seasons to get a really big, bold, you know, um, full bodied red. Mm -hmm. um, but we have some really nice Pinot Noirs. That Cabernet Franc is really nice. It, it, it has some really great fruit characteristics, but it also has that really nice fresh bell pepper that we get that comes through really nicely too. Um, but our Merlot does really well here, Blanc Francish. So it, we can get some really good reds too, but we, we are pretty heavy white. It's about our degree in our growing season. You know, right. typically we yeah. have mid May to late May uh, and then our harvest season uh, for our sparkling wines. Cause we do a lot of sparkling wines up we there. We do sparkling and wines as well. They are oh, world wow. class sparkling wines. Um, and those will usually be picked early, as you know, uh, in the September, but our harvest season lasts from the middle of September all the way until the first week, maybe the second week in November. It really depends on the, on the season. You know, every year is different up here. You guys come on, almost have like an Alsatian style harvest where it's like two or three months long, <laughs> but it makes, right. I mean, it makes sense in that, in that climate. Do you, um, do you also have, um, any type of Beaujolais? at all because of the, the climate with the, the sweeter wines or do people produce Beaujolais wines in Michigan at all? So you're, you're talking about like a, like a dessert. Yeah, style. yeah. Beaujolais, yeah. Yeah, we have um, what we, a lot of people do like a late harvest Riesling and mm -hmm. let, the, let the grapes hang a little bit longer. Some ice. people do ice wine that when, where they'll let the um, grapes hang till December, maybe January. Mm -hmm. Um, and they pick in the snow, which is a really interesting yeah. <laughs> procedure to do. Um, but they, yeah, a lot of those uh, are made up here too. So. And when you're producing your sparkling wines, are they are you doing um, traditional method or the how are they as, uh, ancestral method? Or I had no idea you made sparkling wines, so it's very cool. Oh yeah. Um, we do both uh, the traditional method de Champenois and we also do a uh, Charmat. Okay. Wow. Yeah. We won awards for the uh, traditional style. Uh, it's a, it's a rosé of Pinot Meunier. And Pinot Meunier is actually something we grow on our home farm. Uh, it's a grape that we really believe in. Uh, we're doing both a still version of it and we do a, a sparkling traditional rosé with it as well. Wow. And it's 100%, say 100% Pinot Meunier? Yeah. Yes. Wow. And what are the is it what are the um, the different characteristics of of that versus maybe the Pinot Meunier we would have here? Because we kind of I, when I think of Pinot Meunier, I kind of think of fruitier, fun. It's like that 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 gets put in the blend. But how is it? How is that tasting? And what is the the profile of that wine with 100% Pinot Meunier? Yeah, the, the characters are, are really fun and fruity. Like the ours that we have is very uh, strawberry, but some almond notes and things in it. It's it's a really beautiful wine. Um, I would say maybe a little bit different, maybe with the flavor profile, but um, it, it still has that kind of traditional flavor that mm -hmm. that Pinot. Meunier. But with the traditional method, it's it's really lush and bubbles. It's it's a really delicious wine. How long is it staying on the leaf? So it stays on the leaves for about nine months to a year. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it hangs on the leaves for a bit. 
And do you guys do a manual, manual riddling or do you have a machine? Yeah. You, do, you do. Wow. Well, and we do a machine as well. Yeah. But we do both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's, um, that's, that's really cool. The, uh, I have, so I have a couple of different questions for you to just in regards to your practices and what it's like to work in your particular climate and in your area. So the, what is the, um, what are some of the vinicultural practices that you have? When do you prune? What is the vine training system? Yep, mm -hmm. we do prune. Uh, that usually takes place in the late winter months. Uh, we do uh, double guillot. Okay. Uh, really, a lot of cane pruning. So we're focused on renewals uh, every year. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll spur prune uh, if that's what the particular vine calls for. You know, mm -hmm. we take each vine, uh, but primarily we do cane pruning. Mm -hmm. uh, we no herbicides. We we try to stay um, as organic as possible on our vineyards. Uh, but it is Northwest Michigan, and so we're going to have. A certain level of uh you know threats to the vineyard that we have yeah. to address what are some of those threats do you have any issues you have issues with frost we have not uh so we're uh we're growing vines in what has historically been a cherry uh region mm -hmm. uh we're at okay. cherries um and they have suffered immensely from late frosts because they do pop up every now and then Fortunately, uh, our vines do stay dormant until, you know, that mid-May mm -hmm. uh, time. And so we really don't have too much frost issues. Our primary uh, threats really is uh, cool and, and rainy portions mm -hmm. for a long time. Um, we have to always be on the lookout for powdery mildew, downy mildew, fomopsis, um, and these types of mm -hmm. And then... then of course, uh, if you don't keep the fruit nice and, and, and clean. And we have a lot of good air drainage uh, in our region. Uh, it's very breezy because of yeah. the lake, the cold. And so we don't have much air that sits. It's very hilly. So a lot of our vineyards are, are, are high above. Um, and so that, that keeps them relatively dry as well. Uh, and, this, and, you know, we are always running the risk when you get to the harvest season of temperatures just falling completely apart. We've had a few years where it's emergency pick time because all of a sudden yeah. the low to the 20s, the acids are falling yeah. in the shape. Yeah. So, but we're, you know, we, we learn as we go. And, you know, Michigan winemakers are getting pretty good uh, at, at yeah. understanding the situation and what to grow, how to grow it. And, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. We're evolving. Well, we're seeing that as you guys are winning more and more awards. Sure. <laughs> Very curious about what's going on up and going up there. Sure. How have you, yeah, how have you, how have um, the differences in the vintages over the last, I don't know, let's say, well, five years or so, have you seen, what are some of the differences and how is climate change impacted? Kind of what I've heard from people here is it's not so much the, temperatures rising, but it's the extreme weather conditions that are changing from day to day. How has that impacted the last five vintages and what are you seeing as a result of climate change? So within the last five years, that's kind of how, or when we when we really began to have our first vintages, um, there, there has been a lot of fluctuation as far as from year to year, whether you have a cool summer, and a warm fall or a consistently warm summer and then the fall drops off. It, it, it is very different each year what, you, what we really get up here. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's being affected by the climate change, but I think that Michigan has always kind of been that way too with the extreme temperatures. So um, I think that's one of the reasons why as this um, climate change happens, I think the Michigan winemakers are really good at dealing with the fluctuations and temperatures yeah. they get anyways. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's not much of a change for them um, to keep doing what they've been doing. Um, but it, it is, it is, we, we deal with kind of what, what we get in the vineyard. You know, we don't try to make something that's not, we, we, um, you know, if we need to make sparkling one year, we make sparkling. If we need to make a still the next year, we do that as well. So we just, we deal with what we, what we get. Yeah. And talk about, you know, it's like the, the biggest black and white uh, 
variation that I can think of is 2018 to 2019. We had a really great growing year in 18 and September was nice and warm and dry. October held out for us. And those wines are, you know, they're in the bottle now and they're, they're tasting really brilliant. But wow. uh, 19, we had a cool June. It was a rainy June. We had July and August kind of showed up for us, but then September it fell apart. So that year you saw all of us basically move into sparkling wine mode because the acids were high, the sugars were low yeah. and the, had to come off the vine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, and then last year, even though everything else in the world was so terrible, <laughs> yeah. uh, our farms were up here in this region were magnificent. We had really, really great growing year in 2020, very hot. Uh, we had a long growing season. Mm -hmm. uh, we were picking 23 bricks in September. Yeah. on our Gruner, which was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. So, but yeah. generally at a climate change where Michigan is moving warmer, uh, it's a warming trend. So the USDA, you know, our Department of Agriculture here has the growing zones that they, you know, they break up the continental US into uh, different regions. And so from 1990 to 2012, because uh, they do it every 30 years, they come out with their new map. Michigan did move mostly, our region did at least, from a zone five to a zone six, uh, which really means that Michigan is shifting, uh, at least our part again, from cool to a warmer climate. Uh, yeah. They're comparing us to warmer parts of, uh, you know, mid to southern France. Yeah. Uh, that's the way it's going. And we notice it too. Our growing, our falls are getting nice yeah. and warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can tell you can tell the difference. What are um yeah. what are the what are some of the soil types that you have in your vineyards? So we have what you call uh glacial erratics. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different components there. We have a lot of rocky soil, we have sandy loam. Okay. Um so and and especially like our Rieslings, they they pick up that a lot, you know, the, as a variety, they, they pick up the terroir really well here, a lot of minerality and. and that, that whole zone was a glacier, it was sculptured, sculptured, great, um, it was a glacial sculpture, right? That whole part of the United States um, with the, with the one that, that specific area. So the, let's talk about some of your winemaking practices and so you have a long harvest, similar to Alsace, and then how do your um, do your wines see oak? Do you do myolactic myolactic fermentation? Can you tell me a little bit about your your actual winemaking practices? Sure. Yeah. Um, so with we we do do some malolactic fermentation with our Chardonnay. We do have some barrel Chardonnays that we um, do uh, malolactic fermentation in the barrel, and then we barrel age for a bit. Uh, about nine months, a um, little bit surly contact there too. And with our Rieslings, uh, we do kind of a cold, slower fermentation. Um, our 2016 went out until mid-February. You know, that's a pretty long ferment for a white, but and kind of let it sit and do its thing. And it, and it has turned out really nice every year. Um, the, our Pinot Gris are a little bit quicker turnaround, um, but kind of straightforward white fermentation there. And then our um, Unalk Chardonnay, we have uh, stainless steel. Um, that, that's a pretty, uh, a decent, uh, about the same length mm -hmm. as a Pinot Gris. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have a couple of reds that, that we do, and we, we barrel age those for around 18 months. Cab Franc. Cab Franc. Um, Pinot Meunier. Pinot Meunier. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you also do a Pinot Meunier, Meunier that's not sparkling? We, we did last year mm -hmm. because 2020 was such a warm growing year that we, we did one last year, but that's still in barrel right now. <laughs> that's exciting. I don't think I've ever tasted a, a still Pinot Meunier. I would be really curious about, about what that would be like. Yeah. 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 We've Maybe one or two, but they well, we really love them. We yeah. yeah, they're really wonderful. The um, what is the what is harvest like for you, for you, the two of you? What who does what in the in the process? Well, with the, who's in the who's in the winery? Who's in the vines? Who's uh, <laughs> tell me a little bit about that. So Soul Squeeze uh, wines are all harvested by hand. Um, we do some of it 
ourselves. Uh, a lot of it is just over our heads in the amount, you know. Uh, so we have crews that come and help. And uh, we, our Pinot Meunier, we actually harvest overnight every year. Uh, we about 10, 9, 10 p.m. And we'll get done about 8, 9 in the morning and have a big celebratory breakfast. And it's, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's a tradition around here. That's awesome. Pinot Meunier all night long. <laughs> That's a right. lot of Pinot Meunier, a lot of in the head. Our kids, we have three kids and they come out and help us and uh, they have a really good time with it. Yeah. And are you both, are you both in the, in the winery producing and doing the decouvage or what is that process like? Well, it's, it's more, so we have a, a, a crew that kind of helps us at, at the winery. So, um, Luke and I kind of hold the vision of the winemaking process, and there's a lot of hands in the cellar to be able to help out with. We also work with um, another winemaker here in the area who's just brilliant at what he does too, who has a lot of experience with uh, Michigan wines further back than even I do. So, um, we, so we, we but generally speaking, Faye's in the, she's in the cellar. Uh, she's, she controls that part of it and I'm more in the vineyard. Yeah. That's okay. how it kind of, yeah. Um, so what is the wine community like in general in, in Michigan? Do you guys, is there a collective cooperative? What is that? What is that structure like? In, in yep. so, as we said, there's two AVAs that are right next to each other here in the Traverse city area. Uh, Old Michigan Peninsula is a lot smaller than Leelanau uh, Peninsula. And so there's 10 wineries, I believe, on Old Mission, as opposed to 28 on Leelanau. Mm -hmm. uh, both have a wine trail organization uh, where we all try to work together to uh, raise the, um, uh, just to, to raise knowledge of mm -hmm. the area. And uh, yeah, and everybody up here is, you know, this, it's not really competitive as much as it is we're all kind of in this together, raising awareness of Michigan wines. Mm -hmm. um, we all have the same farming uh, challenges uh, and the same consumers that are coming through your tasting rooms. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> which is always, you know, that's an interesting time, but yeah. As the, what, is, um, what is the wine tourism like in Michigan? So we get a lot of people from the Chicago and Metro Detroit areas. Um, you know, we're in the middle, upper Midwest. So Indiana, Ohio, uh, we get a lot of, but we're seeing the last couple of years, New York, more people from California, Texas. We're having requests from Georgia uh, to ship our wine down there. So I think that more and more people are coming uh, to Northwest Michigan for, for the wine. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a in our tasting room of, people that you know you have Riesling geeks you know so to speak you have the people that are uh that are trying to broaden their horizons with wine so getting into Michigan Chardonnays or trying those Michigan Merlots and Cap Francs uh and really liking those but then we also have our uh party uh people as well we're very popular with uh bachelorette parties uh <laughs> with groups that are coming out um so there's a there's a big fun side to Michigan wine country as well. That yeah, sounds it sounds great. Sometimes <laughs> I want to come visit. <laughs> Please do. Bye bye. Yeah. The, um. So just to circle back to wine making, wine making process. What are the vessels? Are you doing what vessels are you doing your fermentation? Is it all stainless steel? Or are you experimenting with terracotta or anything like that? No, it's mostly stainless steel in barrels, um, uh, 60 layer barrels, punchins, um, but that's, that's majority what we fer ferment in. Mm -hmm. For the fermentation. All right, let me see what else I have in my, my exciting notes over here for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would like to, if you can, if you can speak to this, I, I was like, I think it's going to, it's good to, we always try to keep the student at the center of everything that we do and instill as much wine knowledge as possible to our students and our audience. And that's really what we're committed to because wine is such a dense subject matter and there's so many different veins and alleyways that you can go down in that. And I guess what my last question would be to wrap everything up is, 
Is there anything that you think is really important for a wine student or a wine professional to know specifically about Michigan wines? Hmm. About Michigan wines. So I guess that when I'm thinking about it, I, I studied through the University of California Davis Extension. So I got to actually study from everything from kind of a Californian point of view. Yeah. Um, strange for living in Michigan. <laughs> Yeah, but um, I think one of the biggest things, especially for our region, um, is to to plant the varieties that you can plant or that fits to your region. Right. Um, a lot of people try to plant something that they they really want to try to grow, but doesn't really fit in their um, climate or um, just w weather situation or, or their zone, their growing zone. Um, so I think the, one of the reasons that Michigan is excelling so much in winemaking right now is that people are really uh, defining what grows really well here mm -hmm. and wines really well, sticking to what they know, sticking to what really does well here. And they're, they're really making some wonderful wines. So it's, it's definitely important to stick with what works in your area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so researching, because uh, everything we know in the wine business starts with the farm. And so researching your rootstocks, your clones, uh, and your climate um, uh, data, uh, just all of that is so essential to uh, that end product mm -hmm. that you're going to put for people. Right, because you can, you, you can make good wine out of good grapes, but you can't make good wine out of bad grapes. <laughs> and it's a, yeah, it's it's not easy growing uh, vinifera uh, in this region, but we, we owe it to a lot of those um, early winemakers that came up to this uh, region and got things started off because they're the ones that lived and learned and were, uh, you know, were blessed by their uh, the data that they have been able to accumulate. And we've, we've Michigan wine, uh, the country has really evolved, to, uh, you know, because of that, mm -hmm. uh, because of so. Yeah, that's, that's what I would say. Just research and understanding where yeah. you're at. Yeah. Coming back to that, not forcing it, but allowing the earth to do what it's going to do, right? It's kind of the, right. I guess that could speak to 2020 in a way. I mean, maybe, and maybe it's like controversial, but definitely bigger than us in a lot of ways. So uh, last, last one before we run out of time is, uh, for wine professionals, we have a lot of wine professionals that take courses with us and certifications. Do you have any advice for them in terms of selling Michigan wines or pitching Michigan wines to retailers and to distributors? Any tips for them? Tips for Michigan? Well, you know, the delicate uh, and um, the varietal characteristics that we're able to produce here uh our wines are very like i said before they're very aromatic and and i guess the best, best word is delicate right mm -hmm. um you know pitch in michigan wines well and especially like with our rieslings when we talk about especially our 2016 that we just won an award for um the aging ability of our wines too as far mm -hmm. as the even whites um mm -hmm. really is really a lot longer because of our acids here that we can produce. Um, so our whites age a little bit longer and um, the structure of them holds together really nicely. Um, our 2016 that, that just won that award has really developed nicely in aging as far as like honey notes, um, a little bit of petrol with the Riesling um, and it's going to just continue to get even better with age. So um, yeah, there, we, we can produce some really good wines that hold together really nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, um, it's been such a pleasure to get to know you guys and learn a little bit more about Michigan wines. And uh, thank you for taking the time to, to do that for us and to kind of share some of your knowledge with our students and our audience. Of course, thank, thank you, you Emily. Emily. Yeah, thank you. I will hopefully see you at some point because I'm very curious now <laughs> to try, <laughs> try sure. Michigan wines. Yeah, we love okay. it.